Okay, good morning. This is not an easy one for many reasons, but uh, I will try. Uh, Chimo was my student, was also a student of uh, uh, Pepe Peñarrocha, and it was a person that was not only an excellent scientist, uh, he was also really a friend. Let me just show <clears throat> a little bit Chimo's uh, professional data. Everybody knows that he was born in Castellón. Uh, he graduated around 86 with Pepe Peñarrocha. I met him, I think, for the first time in 89 when I came back to Valencia, so he was already a quite advanced uh, a student. So Pepe asked me to collaborate in the PhD of, uh, of Chimo, so I became a co-advisor. And Chimo was really a, a strange person at the beginning, I will say. Uh, he was a very silent student, so it was not easy to communicate with him. So it took me some time to learn uh, how to collaborate with him. But then after some time, I started to realize that he was an exceptional person, probably one of the best students I have never seen. Uh, <clears throat> I was just asking Chimo to do something. He didn't make questions. He just here. He disappeared for a few weeks. And after a few weeks, he was coming to my office and saying, 25. <laughs> <clears throat> so at the beginning, I didn't know what to answer with that. So, okay, let's see what's going on. But slowly, I realized that every time Simo was giving me an answer, was right. And the difficult thing was really to understand in which way he got the answer, in which way he derived it, but he was always right. Okay, unfortunately, uh, around uh, 90, I got an offer at CERN, so I moved back to CERN again, and we managed that Simo came with me during four months, and it was probably the time that I have most collaborated with him. Uh, he finished the PhD, then he went to Marseille and Norvita and Niels Bohr and many other places. And he came back uh, to Valencia basically in 95. There we met again. Uh, unfortunately, he was in Valencia just a short time because he got the opportunity to come to, Gra to Granada with a permanent position. And that uh, I think it was a loss for me, but it was a very big loss. I think it was a very big loss for Valencia also. It was good for Granada, and it was good for Chimo, because then he came here, he met Blanca, he met Elvira, and I think he was a very happy man here. Because you, you see in all these blue things that he, Chimo was traveling a lot, especially to Nordic places, to Lund, also to Valencia, but Valencia were also short visits just because we were always doing something. So from time to time he just appeared, we discuss a little bit, he disappeared. Uh, it was really, I think, a disaster for me that he moved out of Valencia, and I think a real loss. And you see the real loss when you see the achievements of Chino, Chimo, this is just what uh, uh, SPICE, that means Stanford University, gives about the CIMOS data, 3,000 quotations that for, a peop for some people of his age is a huge amount of citations. You can, you can also see how many collaborators he got, collaborators of all possible ages. So many, many people wanted uh, uh, to collaborate with CIMO. Uh, certainly Hans and me we have been the ones who have collaborated more with him. I would like to put that in the opposite way. When I was doing these numbers, I realized that I have written 26 papers with Chimo. So then I uh, start asking to spies about uh, all my other frequent collaborators, and I realized that, of course, Chimo has been by far, and by far means by many, many publications, the collaborator with him I have really been working more. Because I have put there different uh, European networks where 
uh, Chimo was always collaborating. He was always a very pleasant person. It was easy. Yeah, it was not easy to talk with him because he didn't talk much, but it was always pleasant. I should also say that since Chimo came to Granada, something changed because really Chimo changed the character. He, it became much more easy to talk with him. He became to be uh, much more easy. So I think that uh, Blanc and Elvira have a lot to do with that. And he really uh, seemed to enjoy life here. Okay, let me... It's not mine. Let me just mention uh, a little bit of his uh, achievements. Everybody, when thinks about Chimo, always thinks about the strong interactions, non-perturbative physics, very heavy stuff. However, if you look to the first paper he wrote, for instance, this very first one, Beauty at the LHC, in 1990, there was a very important workshop in Aachen, and all the LHC physics was basically designed there. In this workshop, there was a special working group to decide whether at LHC there should be a detector doing B physics or not. Okay? Uh, what is presently LHCB came many years after this workshop. In this workshop, there were several detectors discussing possibilities and things like that. If you look to the proceedings, you can see this graph. This kind of graph nowadays uh, is very popular. It's the unitary triangle uh, work. So there are uh, two huge web pages which are updating the graph all the time. This is one of these graphs that uh, has thousands and thousands of quotations, everyone, and everybody is looking to that. Uh, this graph was done by Chimo. Okay, and it's the official graph which appears in this very, very important uh, world. There you see all papers that he was doing. It was not his PhD. It was previous to his PhD. It was uh, trying to put bounds on uh, very light Higgs in extended models, it was in the two Higgs doublet model. At that time, uh, everybody was looking at Higgs in all possible ways, in light, uh, light Higgs. The standard model light Higgs was basically excluded, but uh, there were people getting fun with other possibilities. Sibo was basically able to exclude a light Higgs in different extensions with several doublets, and you can see one of his plots. He produced uh, hundreds of plots like this one. And if you look into the PDG, you can see still that the uh, team of results are there. Of course, once he came to Valencia, he did that uh, much more professionally. We wrote a paper together several years later, where he, for instance, it was the first paper I remember where the real theoretical uncertainties in all these uh, unitary triangle determinations were taken into account. But several other people had done the analysis before, but uh, never the real Adronic uncertainties has been truly estimated, and that was a work by Chimo. Of course, Chimo knew how to do that, so in Valencia, then he easily collaborated with other people like Pepe, Gabriela, Martin in other models, but using this kind of data. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. It's really non-perturbative stuff, but they have just added, because it is of the same time when he came back to Valencia, and Paco Guerrero was just a very young uh, student starting the PhD, and uh, Chimo was already advising him. Okay, let me go back to the real PhD. That was the work he did in collaboration with Pepe Peñarrecha, Eduardo, and Cesario Dominguez from South Africa. This was a quite difficult work. So uh, he was trying to study how well we know the B parameter. This involves a four quark operator, so it's a difficult physics. He was studying the two point function correlation of two delta S equal two operators, uh, making the dispersion relations a sum rule which identifies hadronic data with QCD. And Simo produced these plots where you can see different lines. You should get a stable result as a function of this math parameter. So this is something unphysical. So you need to get an horizontal line in order to see that you get the result. So 
Simo started adding more and more and more hadronic states. And as you go on adding states, you can see how you get the horizontal line. So he managed to get an extremely good determination of the parameter, which nowadays is still a very good one. When after this work, he left. So we more or less stopped collaborating for some time. He went first to Marseille, where he produced several very good papers. Then he went uh, to the Niels Bohr Institute in Nordita, and I am sure that Hans will talk about that, so I will skip it. Let me concentrate on the work uh, we did together once he came back to Valencia. Uh, at that time, I was interested on tau physics, there was the possibility to extract the strange quark mass from the tau data. So Simo uh, did a very, very uh, elaborate work, a very careful work, trying to get everything people had computed before about this blob, these two-point functions of two left-handed currents, but everything which had to do with SU3 breaking, the strange quark mass. So it was really a two-year work to compile everything, to apply renormalization group techniques to make sense of it. But at the end of this two-year work, uh, we published two papers, which if you look to SPICE, they are very, very well appreciated because they contain a lot of information, and all this information was Chimus' work, was trying to compute all possible corrections that remain once you do this difference. This difference is exactly zero in the SE3 limit is exactly zero in the perturbative limit okay. in, for massless quarks. So Chimo computed all that. We managed to get uh, some determination of the strange quark mass with Aleph data. Immediately Aleph complained because we were using the data. Uh, they had tried to do something before knowing all these corrections, so they were getting a result which was different in a sense. So we had a very, very tough discussion. The discussion finished with a joint collaborator with the experimentalist. In the middle of the discussion, Elvira appeared. Elvira was a very young student who was just starting. Okay, but then I also realized that Simo had got an excellent student because he was doing a, a superb work. So we managed to make this second paper, which is also a very well-known paper, together with the experimentalist. And you can see in this plot that there is no, nothing to... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Something happened. 